This is CBN News Watch. It is Wednesday, February 17th, 2021. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead today, a massive winter storm blanketing most of the United States with snow and ice and leaving millions without power. Dangerous coronavirus mutations, while new cases of COVID-19 are dropping, experts are concerned the variations of the virus and how they could lead to a higher death toll. We're going to talk to CBN News medical reporter Lori Johnson. They are facing censorship, blacklist, and more. Who are they? Americans who support former president Donald Trump. Why some people compare it to what happened in communist countries. And sad news today, a trailblazing Christian music artist, Carmen, has died at the age of 65. All those stories and more are ahead in today's edition of CBN News Watch. We begin this half hour with a massive winter storm hitting the country, with more than 73 percent of the nation covered in snow. In Texas, millions remain in the cold and the dark. The state's energy grid struggles to cope. Natural gas, wind, and nuclear facilities knocked offline, and it could be days before they're back. Many pointing the finger at, at the ERCOT, the nonprofit organization that controls most of the state's energy. This was a, a total failure by ERCOT. They showed that they were not reliable. Joel Osteen's Lakewood Church opening its doors as a warming center. The Salvation Army also helping storm victims. Overnight, the storm dumped more snow on the Midwest. In Oklahoma, the state's capital recording its coldest temperature in more than a century Tuesday, minus 14 degrees. So far, more than 20 deaths have been reported as a result of this dangerous weather, including a woman and an 8-year-old girl who died in their garage trying to stay warm in a running car. Forecasters say the storms will continue to batter the country throughout the week before clearing out over the weekend. The severe weather has also delayed shipments of the vaccines for COVID-19. The snow and ice slowing down deliveries and keeping some people from being able to get out to get a shot. But even as the number of new cases and hospitalization rates have been dropping, health experts are still deeply concerned about coronavirus variants that have been showing up in the United States. Here with us now to talk more about these mutations is our CBN News medical reporter, Lori Johnson. So, Lori, the CDC says the mutation of the virus from the United Kingdom is likely to be the dominant here in the U.S. by the end of next month. Is that a concern? It really is, Ephraim, because uh, this, this new mutation, this so-called uh, uh, UK mutation, is about 40 percent more contagious. It's that much more transmissible. It's that much easier to get and also spread. And so a number of health professionals, such as the nation's leading infectious disease doctor, Anthony Fauci, recommend taking extra precautions, more than what we've done up until this point, such as double masking wearing a surgical mask underneath a cloth mask, although the CDC, Ephraim, is still sticking with its original guidelines of just one mask and staying six feet or more or, uh, from of another person. So, Lori, could that mutation lead to a higher death rate here in the United States? Well, one study out of the U.K. showed that the U.K. variant does have a higher death rate. It is more deadly, although that study needs to be confirmed. But just the very fact that it's more contagious could mean that more people get it. And just by that fact alone, more people could die. Now, we know we also have the mutations from South Africa and Brazil and one from California. Is it possible there are other variations here that we just don't know about? Absolutely. It's very common for viruses to mutate. In fact, thousands of times, it's, uh, the coronavirus isn't as susceptible to mutations as other viruses, like the flu virus, but we've seen many of them. And most of the time, when a virus mutates, it's harmless. Although this South African variant is even more concerned to healthcare officials because it has been shown to significantly evade the vaccines and also treatments. So what that means is the vaccines are not as effective against the South African variant as they have been against the normal variant that we've been dealing with for the last year and also the UK variant. They still work, but just not as effectively. 
So what's the best way to stop the mutations? Well, Ephraim, the best way to stop the mutations is to not get the coronavirus because the way a virus mutates is when it is passed from one person to another. It can't mutate any other way. And so this is a real wake-up call for the, so many of us who aren't really worried about getting the coronavirus because people say, hey, I'm young, I'm healthy, it's, I'm probably going to be asymptomatic or it's just going to be a mild case. They need to remember that even if you get an asymptomatic case or a mild case and you pass it on to another person, which most people do, most people pass it on to at least three others, then that is, continues to carry the risk of these variants developing. What's the latest on the vaccine front? How successful are we right now at getting people vaccinated? Well, more and more people are getting vaccinated each day. It's up to around 1.3 million people. And so about 50 million Americans, believe it or not, Ephraim, have already received at least one shot. And so uh, the healthcare officials say probably by May or June, everybody in the United States who wants a vaccine will be able to get one. We do know right now, though, that supply is not nearly high enough to meet the demand, but that is likely to change in the month months ahead as vaccine production ramps up and we know that that Johnson and Johnson vaccine might be approved as early as the end of this month. All right, Lori Johnson, thank you so much for your insight as always. Much sure. appreciated. Former President Donald Trump blistered Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell Tuesday, calling him, quote, a political hack. That statement came from Trump days after McConnell denounced him as the insider of the U.S. Capitol attack, although he voted to acquit President Trump in his impeachment trial. Trump said the Republican Party can never again be respected or strong with political leaders like Senator Mitch McConnell at its helm. Mitch is a dour, sullen, and unsmiling political hack, and if Republican senators are going to stay with him, they will not win again. That statement could further deepen the division among Republicans. President Joe Biden worked to clarify his position on reopening schools in a CNN town hall last night, saying a majority of elementary schools will be open five days a week by the end of his first 100 days in office. He was responding to a question from Anderson Cooper, who pointed out Biden's administration was saying that for schools to be open may mean only being open one day a week. That's what was reported. Uh -huh. That's not true. It was a mistake in the communication. But I've, what I'm talking about is I said opening the majority of schools in K through eighth grade because they're the easiest to open, the most needed to be open in terms of the impact on children and families having to stay home. Biden said he expects many schools will push to stay open through the summer. Famous Christian music artist Carmen, known to fans simply as Carmen, has died at the age of 65. An update on his Facebook page last night says he died at a Las Vegas hospital after fighting a series of complications resulting from surgery to repair a hiatal hernia. Carmen, a GMA Gospel Music Hall of Fame member, underwent hernia surgery, which had resulted in a sudden life-threatening crisis, including internal bleeding, organ failure, and then pneumonia. Carmen had been diagnosed with an incurable multiple myeloma cancer in 2013. He experienced several years of recovery. Then he reported last year the cancer returned. Two-time Grammy winner and Christian music artist Jason Crabb called him, quote, a trendsetter and a trailblazer. You can read more about Carmen's life and legacy at CBNNews.com. Coming up, there are Americans who've been called crazy, censored, blacklisted, and more. Who are they? Supporters of former President Donald Trump. We're going to tell you why some people say it's similar to what happened in communist countries. We've got the story for you when we come back. on your definition of when life begins. 
Watch Dan and Dale tackle trending topics that test your faith on the next Faith Wire, Monday night at 9.30. The Global Lane takes you around the world providing facts over fiction. What might rising trade and geopolitical tensions mean for you on the home front? With over 45 years of experience, award-winning journalist Gary Lane brings you the truth from a global angle. What about the issue of immigration? World news analysis you won't see anywhere else. And it's all right here on The Global Lane. Watch The Global Lane, Thursday night at 9.30. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else the CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. They've been called crazy, censored, blacklisted, and more. Americans are being rooted out and punished for their support of former President Donald Trump. And some warn this is similar to what happened in some communist countries. Dale Hurd brings us this alarming report. This was an attorney for PBS caught on camera saying the children of Trump supporters should be taken away from their parents and put in re-education camps. He was later fired while voices in the media still call for Trump supporters to be deprogrammed. There are millions of Americans, um, almost all white, almost all Republicans, who somehow need to be deprogrammed. And the question is, how are we going to really almost deprogram these people who have signed up for the cult of Trump? Trump supporters are also being called mentally ill and are being censored, doxxed, deplatformed, blacklisted, and demonetized. It's giving some who have lived in communist countries flashbacks. For those who lived under communist dictatorships, what's happening in America has some disturbing parallels. Chinese pastor Bob Fu was a student leader during the Tiananmen Square pro-democracy demonstrations in 1989. He was also a proud attendee of the January 6th Trump rally on the National Mall. He says the call to re-educate and deprogram Trump supporters is straight out of the Chinese Communist Party playbook. It's absolutely uh, these kind of tactics. Uh, they all requires force the conformity. And if you don't comply, then you will be punished. Elizabeth Rogliani's family had to flee Venezuela when Hugo Chavez took power. Her video warning last year to Americans about the similarities between the Antifa and Black Lives Matter rioting and what happened in Venezuela went viral. I have already lived through this thing when I was living in Venezuela. She says the labeling of Trump supporters as potential domestic terrorists was a tactic Hugo Chavez used to stigmatize his political opposition. Calling out opposition or Republicans as terrorists or fascists, that is the kind of language I saw a lot. Uh, late President Hugo Chavez used to call us fascists and terrorists as well. Rogliani says one ominous sign for America has been all the conservatives flocking to more secure messaging platforms like Telegram, because that's exactly what happened in Venezuela when the Democratic opposition was deplatformed and opposition leaders began to be arrested.
we jumped into Telegram really early on. So I had it for years. I find that very interesting how it's happening so fast here. Jason Poblet's grandfather had to flee Cuba when Fidel Castro took power. Poblet, an attorney who has worked in Congress, is president of the Global Liberty Alliance and says what happened in Cuba is replaying in the United States. Dale, it's painful to watch. It's not something that I ever thought I would see in the United States. In Cuba, the socialist facilitators had been laying the groundwork. And by the time Fidel Castro rolled in, uh, they had already laid that framework in place to take the government over. German evangelist and author Heidi Munt grew up in former communist East Germany, which called itself the German Democratic Republic. And she has harsh words for America's Democrats. Your Democrats remind me to the German Democratic Republic, so the communist part of Germany, the east part of Germany. They also called themselves Democrats, but they were socialists, communists. When Heidi, as a young woman, began to speak out against the East German government, she paid the price. My career stopped, you know, it was broken. So I could not find a job anymore. Dissidents in East Germany and the old Soviet bloc were also called mentally ill and sent to hospitals, as they are today in China. Children were also taken away from dissidents. In East Germany, um, they took away, they really took away children. They put them in, um, in orphanages and uh, the parents did not get them back. Yeah. These voices warning Americans are not alone. Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki has compared the treatment of President Trump to Poland's communist era. Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny, sentenced last week to two years in a penal colony by Vladimir Putin's Russian government, called Donald Trump's Twitter ban an unacceptable act of censorship. All these, uh, you know, deplatforming, this kind of thing are exactly happening in China. They're using the similar tactics with the same playbook. Jason Poblet said if his grandfather, who loved America deeply, was alive today to see how Trump supporters are being demonized, he would be scared. And then he would tell me, hey, Jason, what are you doing about it? <laughs> because you can't go anywhere. I mean, this is it. There's nowhere for us to go. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Still ahead, see how an injured bird helps to heal a hurting family. We're sharing the award-winning book that's now a movie with actress Naomi Watts bringing the real-life tale to the screen. Want to be a part of a community that inspires your spiritual growth while winning prizes? The all-new MyCBN app. Connect with the community for prayer and encouragement. Track and set spiritual goals. Enjoy conversation starters with friends and family and collect points to win prizes. The all-new MyCBN app, a great place to belong. Download the app at cbn.com slash mobile. Grow, connect, have fun. The all-new MyCBN app. On the home front. Thanks for joining us for CBN's On the Home Front, where we highlight what the men and women of America's military do to defend our country. CBN honors the men and women in our military with an initiative called Helping the Home Front. It partners with churches across the country to meet the needs of their military families, from repairing homes to wiping out medical bills for wounded veterans. Watch On the Home Front today at 2.30. Too often, we carry baggage from our past. You know what it's like. It affects everything and everyone in our lives. It's always there, weighing us down and keeping us from achieving true happiness. But do you know God never meant for us to be trapped in the past? You can be free of your baggage. Learn how God's forgiveness leads to changed lives and new beginnings. 
Call the 700 Club. It's a real life tale of triumph over tragedy, and it's now a movie. Penguin Bloom is the story of Sam Bloom, an athletic mother of three boys whose life takes a tragic turn on a family vacation to Thailand. She falls off a roof and permanently loses her ability to walk. But Sam finds a light in the darkness when one of her sons rescues an injured magpie. That sick bird turns out to be exactly what mom, dad, and the entire family needed to jumpstart their journey to recovery. Oscar-nominated actress Naomi Watts plays the role of Sam in the film, and she takes us behind the scenes. Can you feel this? That's cool. Like a superpower. You want to erase yourself, who you were. There's the weight of the world on my shoulders. But you're still you, Sam. Hello. Maybe she should have left it there. She needs a knife. Penguin. Where did you first meet Samantha? On the page, of the book, um, the script, or in person? Where did you first meet her? The page of the book. Hmm. That's where yeah. it started, yeah. She's a wild bird. She doesn't want to be stuck inside, does she? The boys and I were struggling. You're struggling. Yes, it's all of us. And I just was flipping through the book and saw these images of this tiny little baby bird doing bizarre, beautiful things and the family and how they were coming together. And then, um, and I was with my family and um, it just struck me how drawn in they were to the story. It must be weird to have wings and not be able to fly. It told us the story of how a family can recover. What if something awful happens? We don't talk in what if. We live our yeah, life. Don't. They were able to heal together, but it did take a process and it did take a lot of work and time. And there was something just so magical about the, this connection with the bird and that being the, the catalyst, the glue that, that create, uh, cr created the path to recovery. Would you say she had to rediscover her identity, if you will, being such an active outdoor person and to lose the ability to walk? And so suddenly, with no preparation. So it was such a shocking shift for her to manage, as well as dealing with excruciating pain. It was, it was, it was gut-wrenching. I'm sorry I haven't been strong enough to help you through it, but I am. I'm your mom. Same mom. What? Um, did you think, I guess, of, of the family? This seems like such a beautiful family. I mean, or because crisis can can really tear you apart yeah. through no fault of your own. But it, yeah. it pulled them all together. It did, and you know, not without bumps along the way. And right. she's very honest about that. And you know, she didn't feel like she was being the best um, wife or parent, um, but. This is what's so important about this kind of storytelling is that I feel you imagine yourself in that story. Who would you be in a point of crisis? How would you behave? We don't really know until we're there, but um, it's really lovely to get close and imagine how that would play out. Lovely and painful at the same time, but lovely reminder that a human being can be resilient and can find their way through. It's so beautifully uplifting. Hey, thanks for pushing me. And I'm sorry you have to live with this. Are you kidding? I consider myself the luckiest man alive. What do you think it was inside her that clicked to make the change? Because, you know, at a point, I guess our eyes are open that this is not the end. The, the spirit of the family, absolutely. The need to move on um, or move through it. Some people recover in ways like, oh, this, is, this has changed my life. This is how it was meant to be. She doesn't say it out loud in such declarative ways, but she says, I've found a way to adapt.
Penguin Bloom is available right now on Netflix. It's also an award-winning book. For more uplifting entertainment news like this, be sure to check out this evening's all-new edition of Studio 5. We've got a look at a new Disney film with a squirrel in the role of a superhero. That's Flora and Ulysses. We're also celebrating Black History Month with the director and cast of the film, Harriet. You can catch it all this evening on Studio 5. It begins at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time on the CBN News Channel. And we'll be back with an encouraging word for your day ahead. It's all coming up right after this. Are you suffering from feeling tired or worn out during the day? Can you not turn off your brain at night? You are not alone. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Bruce, The Sleep Doctor, and I've partnered with the Christian Broadcasting Network, and we're gonna bring you some unbelievable information that you can use tonight to get a better night's rest. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to get your free copy of Protect Your Sleep today. Nutrition, exercise, essential oils, weight loss, and more. It's Healthy Living with Lori Johnson. Talk about what's in this. Join CBN health reporter Lori Johnson to get the latest information from today's top health experts. This is fantastic. Find out what you need to know to live a healthier life. Watch Healthy Living, Tuesday night at 930. Woohoo! Hi, Superbook fans. Here's something else you'll love. <laughs> it's the new Superbook Bible app. <laughs> it's packed with games, activities, and Superbook episodes that you can watch for free. Oh, no! There's trivia, a fun daily devotional, and answers to your Bible questions. Plus, an easy-to-understand Bible the whole family will enjoy. You can even create your own Superbook character. Ta-da! Whoa! Falls, Come with oh, sorry, pardon me, sorry, excuse me. Ouch! Are you getting this? Earn super points to win daily prizes too. And so much more! <sighs> Time to get back to my adventures. See you soon! It's the new Superbook Bible app. Free downloads on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. Your news channel. Your shows. The stories you care about. Anytime you want. Anywhere you want. Download the CBN News app today. It's time now for your Wednesday word, and today's word is this. Thoughts always perceive actions, and knowledge used properly produces proper results. It's a great day to increase your knowledge of God's word. Think about it, meditate on it, and put it to proper use. With that word, make this a wonderful Wednesday. And be sure to have yourself a wonderful rest of the week. And do it on purpose. That is going to do it for this edition of CBN News Watch. I want to remind you, you can always find more of our news programs on the CBN News Channel at any time. You can also find them online at CBNNews.com. We'd love to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can email us. The address is newswatch at CBN.com. And, of course, you can also reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We hope you'll join us right back here, same time tomorrow. We appreciate your company. Thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Bye-bye, everybody.